You're tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday. That means class is about to be in session with Greg Cosell. I live for this. It's our first time talking about the draft prospects, in particular, the quarterbacks. Cannot wait to hear what Greg has to say about Caleb Williams and Drake May and Jaden Daniels. I know a lot of you live for this as well, and this show will get a lot of plays, whether it's audio or YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, all the way until the draft, as people love to hear what the civilian goats Greg Cosell from the NFL Films says about these quarterback prospects. You know me, I'm Ross Tucker, I'm a former NFL offensive lineman, got a bunch of media gigs, got a bunch of podcasts, love those of you that like tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday, maybe you're missing me, maybe say, you know what, Joe Dolan said some interesting stuff on Fantasy Feast, or I want to hear what Emery said about these quarterbacks on College Draft, or how about the information from Steve Fezzik about injuries and the injury information and what that means for teams. You will be blown away. That's the Even Money podcast. Highly encourage you guys to check all those out. I should mention, I love all of you. You're like my podcast children, but I my, I do have favorites. My favorites are those of you that go the little extra mile to try to help us do something to grow the show. It's not easy. How about Ben Berlin? He commented on an even money post. Thank you, Ben. Spreading the word via social media. It all counts. Any engagement counts. Posts, quote posts, comments. Amazing. Sponsor confirmation email winner. How about Doug Phelan? We said on the College Draft Podcast, you go to footballgameplan.com slash 2024 draft guide. You get that. You get a great chance to be a winner. Doug Ben, email me, ross at rosstucker.com, like people do all the time for speaking engagements or whatever, and let me know what signed press pass you would like. I'm hoping to get to a bunch of them today and tomorrow. I know I owe a bunch of you, including those of you that ordered gifts at myfrontpagestory.com. I'm hopeful, hopeful I can get to some of them today or tomorrow. The YouTube shout-out winner, Michael Garber. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Michael, just email me, Ross at Ross Tucker.com, who you want the video for, and I will do that for you, brother. Alex Ackman is our patron of the day, patreon.com slash RT Media. It's big show time. The big show. All right, Greg, it is one of my favorite times of the year. When we start to dive into these prospects, especially the quarterbacks, and I get a chance to pick your brain on what you think of these young men. Of course, everybody knows Greg Cosell, the NFL Films legend, at Greg Cosell on social media. We'll be doing a different position group all the way until the NFL draft now at this point, which is just fantastic. So between this and the College Draft podcast, You'll be more than prepared for the NFL draft, whether you check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, or you just listen here on the podcast. Greg, I always ask you the same question, and you know, it does really vary greatly from year to year. And interestingly, there's already a lot of conversation about next year's quarterback class not being a very good one. Right. There's a belief that this year's quarterback class is a good one. You know, I've seen those mock drafts and everything where they've got four guys going in the top eight or top ten. But I don't really care what other people think. I care what you think. (laughs) And so let's start there. I know you've watched, you know, half a dozen, ten of these guys, whatever it is, the the top eight to ten guys. What were your overall impressions of, of this group? 
Uh, I think it's a really solid group. You know, I, I've always been of the belief, Ross, that these guys are all prospects. You know, obviously some are better than others. I've never been of the belief that we can talk about these guys being special and great before they play in the league. You've got to make a determination when you evaluate what you think they're going to be. Um, but, you know, I think we learned, I hope we learned our lesson a little bit. And this is no knock on Trevor Lawrence at all, who I think is a good player and will probably get better. But, you know, everybody said when he came out, he's a generational quarterback. You know, and that's a term I would never use. I mean, he's played three years in the league and he's a good player. But I don't think anybody is going to say right now that Trevor Lawrence is generational or that he's even one of the two or three best quarterbacks in the league. So, you know, you have to be very careful about that. And the reason I mention that is because that's what we're hearing now about Caleb Williams. People I respect greatly who have been former GMs, even some present coaches that I've talked to, talk about Caleb Williams, and, and I respect them tremendously, the people that I've had conversations with. Um, they talk about him as if they've never seen anybody like him before. And, you know, I struggle with, with saying that. And, and, and I've done a ton on Caleb Williams. I watched him last summer, his 2022 tape. I think I watched eight or nine games. I've, I've already finished him. I've done his 2023 tape. I've done eight or nine games. And I think he's a really good prospect. But I, I, the operative word there, I would say, is prospect. Why do you not think he's what other people seem to think he is? Well, and again, these this is just a small sample size of people that I talk to. I'm sure there are others. Um, you know, I think that Williams is um, he's a high level prospect for sure. Um, you know, I think that you're dealing with a guy, and this is something that I learned from others. One thing he does exceptionally well, Ross, is he can control the football really well when he throws it. And and that's something people don't talk about a lot, you know, and that's one thing that leads to being able to throw with, with pretty precise ball location, um, to be able to control the football when you throw it. And he, he's really, really good at that. Hold on, um, hold on a second, Greg. I, what does that mean? Are you talking about accuracy? What do you mean yeah, control it relates the football to ball when you throw it? Ball location, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, some guys you just can do it naturally and other guys struggle with it. You know, I think he does that really well. I think that's just the Puts way he it exactly where he wants it to be. Correct. Okay. Um, but I would say his greatest strength coming into the NFL, and this is something that people focus on more so than ever before. His greatest strength will be his outstanding spatial awareness to kind of calmly and effectively navigate the chaos that's in the pocket. He can function very intelligently, very athletically, very smartly uh, at game speed when there's a lot of chaos. And keep in mind, USA did not have a very good offensive line. One thing I do want to do with Williams is I want to look at all of his sacks again the last two years because he's been sacked an awful lot. And you have to look at each one of those plays individually. You can't just look at numbers on a page. You can't say, oh, well, it's a bad all line or, oh, it's on him. You've got to look at each one individually. And I'm going to take, I'm going to do that again. Um, but what you didn't see much of at USC, which doesn't mean he can't do it, but you didn't see him executing NFL pass game concepts where he hit his back foot and played with a really strong, refined sense of timing. You didn't see a lot of that. Again, doesn't mean he can't do it, but, you know, again, and and, I'm, and because of what I do, Ross, I'm not going to be interviewing him. I'm not going to be at his pro day. I'm not going to be sitting with him for an hour at, at, you know, with an iPad or at the board. I'm just watching the tape. So you didn't see a lot of those kinds of things on tape, but there's no question he has high-level traits. He brings a dynamic and at times spectacular playmaking dimension that is going to make people think of Patrick Mahomes. Um, and again, Mahomes is, you know, perhaps on his way to being the best ever. So I'm very, I'm very loath to make those kinds of comparisons. But that's what Williams is at this point. Um, is he, and again, we're talking prospects here. Is he clearly the best prospect in this draft based on your tape study or not necessarily? Um, I would probably say he's number one, yes. But I don't think he's number one and everybody else is, is way below him. Um, you know, I, I think that he, he would be my, you know, if I had to make a list, he'd be number one on the list. It's interesting what you said about the refined sense of timing you're right. He still might be able to do that, but that that combined with the sack numbers 
Those are like red flags to me as a former offensive lineman. And by the way, they're red flags to some other people I've talked to as well. So, you know, look, I try to learn from everybody, Ross. I mean, you know, you know that I do this. I've been doing this for a long time. I think most people, you know, I learn from the best, okay? I learn from Bill Walsh. I've learned from some of the absolute best in, in evaluating quarterbacks, which doesn't mean I'm going to be right every single time. Nobody is. You have to wait till they play in the league, and there's so many variables, as you know, when you get to the NFL. Um, but, you know, when when I watch a quarterback... I'm thinking in terms of can this guy be a Super Bowl quarterback? Not can he get his team to eight and nine or nine and eight or ten and seven, but does this guy can he play snap after snap after snap at a really high level? You know, that's what you you know, not can he make a special play. Williams can make special plays, and by the way, he'll make some no matter where he goes, where you go, Oh my god, that's amazing. But you know, that's not enough to be great. Well, Justin Fields makes a lot of special plays too. Justin and Fields is the a Bears better appear, athlete than Williams with a to move on from arm him. than Williams. So, you know, and, and, and I don't think anybody thinks that Justin Fields is, quote-unquote, as good as Williams now. But that remains to be seen. That's a great question about Justin Fields, not to go off on a major tangent, but he started 37, 38 games in this league. Um, is, is Do we feel after that that this is what he is, or do we feel that Justin Fields, with a change in coaching staff, can then become more and become a really good player, given that his physical traits are so high level? You know, that's a really fascinating question. It's one that Ryan Poles, you know, obviously has to answer. Right. Good stuff on Caleb Williams, for sure. You know, sometimes they actually like it, Greg, when a guy doesn't have a good offensive line in college, because... He has to get used to playing in that chaos yep. or handling that kind of stuff. Um, and they also like to see him have to go through some adversity like he went through this past year. No so, question. Because in the NFL, you're going to have to be able to handle that. You know, and, and if he's, you know, depending on what team he goes to, I mean, people think he'll go to Chicago. You know, we'll see. But, I mean, you have to be able to function intelligently, athletically, um, calmly within chaos in the NFL that's you know and when I say chaos I don't mean where a guy just runs free and attacks the quarterback I mean where there's bodies around you where the pocket gets squeezed where you still have to function is there a is there a clear number two guy to um, Greg? Are there a couple guys that are I right think, there? For I think you? we want to talk about Jaden Daniels and Drake May. I mean, you know, this is where the whole list thing for me is is difficult because they're different players, and I think they'll be looked at differently, and therefore they'll be kind of team and scheme specific and coach specific. Um, so let's look at Daniels. Um, Daniels was a big time recruit coming out of Southern California. He's close friends with uh, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young. They're all in that same group. Um, He originally went to Arizona State, then spent two years at LSU. The progression in his game has been really nice to watch. It's been both incremental and dramatic. Um, He is an explosive, explosive athlete. And as we know in today's NFL, the way coaches look at this, uh, they they look at that now in a – they equate a lot more emphasis to that than they used to. And he is a really dynamic athlete. Um, But he's a relatively refined passer as well. He's really grown in that regard. He's got solid fundamentals and mechanics. He will work from the pocket, Ross. He is not a guy that's going to run out of the pocket automatically. I mean, we saw him with a sense of patience. We saw him working progression reads. Um, You know, I, I would say, look, at times... I would say his vision was blurred at the second and third levels, and he did leave some throws on the field. Um, but then he could compensate for that with his running ability. So you have to figure out, you know, how you feel about all that. And, you know, it, some coaches will look at that differently. Um, you know, I would say that, you know, he, he doesn't have a sudden twitchy arm. You know, he's not a, a big-time passer the way, let's say, Williams is or Drake May, and we'll get to May in a moment. Um, but I would say that he did a really nice job of uh within the context of of his offense um there was a calmness to his game a poise to his game um i really like daniels i think he's a guy that is still ascending and will continue to grow what would be the knocks the negatives the concerns watching him play um I would say that he's not a really high level passer in an ideal world you know he's he's um, he can drive the ball at times, but he's not a naturally high, high-level passer. Um, I thought, as I mentioned before, there were times, and 
uh, a tendency, but not a major one, where he didn't turn it loose when the throws were there within the play concept and structure. Um, you know, did, didn't isolate things as, as quickly and as cleanly as you'd like him to. Um, you know, you didn't see a ton of anticipation type throws in their offense. So, you know, you wonder, hey, can he do that? Can he stick it into his own windows comfortably? You know, can he make those kinds of throws, which you have to make at the NFL level? And again, these are these are concerns, but not major ones in the sense that I don't believe he can be a good NFL quarterback, but they're just things that, you know, you want to feel that he can do. What about, Greg, the fact that he has, and we'll talk about them in a couple of weeks, but he has two first round pick yeah. wide receivers at his disposal, including Malik Neighbors. You know, on the one hand, man, that's got to make it uh, easier and better. On the other hand, you know, so did Joe Burrow, and that's worked out for him pretty well in the pros too. So it's not it's not a knock. I just wonder how how that factors into the evaluation, if at all. Uh, it doesn't really factor in for me because I'm watching the quarterback and, and seeing how he plays. And, you know, it's funny you say that because, you know, all through the years, a lot of great quarterbacks who are Hall of Famers have, have, have had great receivers, and we don't knock them for it. You know, we don't say, well, you know, Joe Montana wasn't very good, you know, I mean, or, you know, he was throwing a Rice and Taylor or, or, you know, I mean, we don't say that. You know, we don't say that about the great quarterbacks that are in the Hall of Fame. You know, yeah, he's got really good receivers, and, and I think neighbors, to me, neighbors is, it would be my number two receiver after Marvin Harrison, and I think the Thomas kid is a really ascending talent um but but that doesn't factor in how i evaluate Jaden daniels what about drake may uh because there's some interesting things there as well i know people that really really are seems like there's more of uh that he might be a little bit more polarizing than the other two uh what have you seen from drake may yeah and i think that's probably fair i mean you're dealing with a guy that has tremendous talent. I mean, physical traits, big. I mean, you're going to have a guy that's 6'3 six, 6'4", 220, 225. He is a terrific athlete. Um, but there's a lot of detail and nuance that he needs to clean up. Um, and the other thing that is a little concerning was I thought that his, his inconsistent and at times erratic ball placement was could well be a problem. Um, but... He certainly has the physical traits as a passer from the pocket. Um, he has higher level athleticism. Uh, but, you know, there are some things that clearly need to be cleaned up. I mean, you know, he's a guy that drifts a little bit. And I, I've, I've learned this from a lot of quarterback coaches smarter than I am through the years, Ross. He drops back and he kind of drifts. And when you do that, you know that you're, you're an offensive lineman. That's That's not a good thing because you're blocking for a guy – you know, to be where he's supposed to be. And if he starts drifting in the pocket for no reason, then all of a sudden he's drifting into pressure. And it makes you look bad when it's not your fault. You know, because O-linemen, you know, they block a certain way based on the play call and on the drop of the quarterback. And May does have a tendency to do that. He drifts off the midline, and that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, I hate that. Get rid of him. I'm out. I'm out on May. I hate, no, I'm just um, you know, one of the things that's interesting about May, and I think Nate Tice, uh, Mike Tice's son, who was on the show at some point, brought this up. I don't think people realize, Greg, and I don't know if it's because he's a bigger guy or he's a white guy or whatever. I, I don't think people realize he's a much better athlete than people realize. Oh, he's a terrific that's the thing. He is a big physical athlete, and that is a trait. You know, Caleb Williams is probably going to come in at six feet, half inch. Um, and, you know, I've seen people compare him, you know, and I haven't made this comparison, but I've seen people I respect say he's Kyler Murray. Now, if you said that, people would think, oh, well, that means he's not a great, great prospect, even though Murray was the first pick in the draft, because I don't think Murray in the NFL is viewed that way. But, Drake May is 6'3 and a half, 6'4, 220, 225, as I mentioned. He is a terrific, terrific athlete, and that absolutely factors into the evaluation. Yeah, I feel like people don't realize just how well he runs and yep. scrambles and how effective he's been with that. Uh, I'll be very curious. You know, that that this is why it's so interesting, isn't it, Greg? Because you go over the pros and cons of each guy. And you can see, you know, Jaden Daniels has a very different body type than Drake May. 
And you can see why some people would prefer May. Some people would prefer Jaden Daniels. But, man, the drifting and the ball placement, uh, those are those concerns. Those are two things that, ha- yeah, they need to be cleaned up. Or, you know, and that's why he's pol- – you, you hit it. He's a little polarizing for that reason. Um, you know, uh, but, you know, the 6'4", 225, there's not a lot of guys. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's Josh Allen or Justin Herbert. You know, I don't – those comparisons are, are often tough for me to make, but you're dealing with a big kid that has a lot of physical and athletic traits. And I would just say this, Greg, seeing Josh Allen and Herbert in person, I think people would be stunned by how big they are. I, and, and I've seen are both big in person. Men. And, and I, I've stood next to both, and it, it, it and I'm, I'm almost 6'4", and it blew me away how big those guys are. Yeah, those are big. I mean, they could be tight ends if they wanted to be. That, yeah. you know, obviously, they're not going to be, but they could. Absolutely awesome stuff, Greg. we got a bunch of guys to get to next week. I'm really curious to hear who's next, so to speak, on your list. we got Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, Michael Pratt, uh, the Bazooka Joe, Joe Milton, <laughs> Spencer Rattler, who my guy Emery Hunt really likes. A lot to get to next week in our second quarterback episode should be awesome thank you so much greg all right ross appreciate it oh my gosh i'm already looking forward to next week i am so excited for next week i'm so excited every time i eat DiGiorno. you know why DiGiorno knows that planning any type of party on a budget isn't easy you need the perfect setting you gotta have the perfect squad and of course the perfect eats luckily you're a game time mastermind And you know that grabbing DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza can bring home a dub because it's packed with half a pound of cheese sauce and other toppings and comes at an incredible price. Make the game-winning call. Grab a DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza from the grocery store today. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. It's also not just any beer. It's Labatt Blue Light. You see my picture from two weekends ago in Montana? I brought Labatt Blue Light with me to Montana to drink it, and so I could measure the snow when I was skiing. Unbelievable. Just be like me. Just be awesome and drink Labatt Blue Lights with your friends or by yourself or in a closet. I don't care. Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Tux Takes. All right, Ross, something you teased from yesterday's episode, Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., he is not participating in any drills at either the Combine or his Pro Day. Love it. Why should he? He's a locked top five pick. Nothing that happens in those drills has anything to do with making him a better football player for his team for next year, and everybody knows it. I love that he is realizing, why even do this nonsense why don't I just try to have the best rookie season possible? Thank you, MHJ. The Chiefs, they're tag- tagging cornerback Lajarius Sneed for $19 million, and they're also releasing wide receiver Marquez Valdez-Scantling to save $13 million. MVS made some plays for them, man, but he, he's not worth that much money, so they got to get rid of him. As for Sneed, sounding more and more like he's going to end up getting traded somewhere, the Chiefs just can't pay everybody, and they got some other good corners. And the NFLPA team reports cards came out, and the Chiefs owner, Clark Hunt, got an F-. minus. Didn't even know that existed. I, I know. I mean, not just an F, bro. An F-. minus. I was actually texting uh, a couple Chiefs I know. They like him. They said he's a good guy. That They say he's just cheap. Like the hotels they stay in on the road or the facility. He acknowledged the facility yesterday. I don't know. There's got to be some owners, Jack, that are like, hmm, F minus, and they won back to back Super Bowls. Maybe that's the key. Or maybe Patrick Mahomes has something to do with it, owner. Uh, the Jets also gave quarterback Zach Wilson permission to seek a trade, which is hilarious. Is that one of those like Brock Osweiler trades where we have to give something up for you to take him and his salary off our books? That's amazing. Have an amazing weekend. I love all of you guys. I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out to MyFrontPageStory.com. I've never felt stronger about anything in my life than it's the best gift of all time. And if you have an anniversary or a birthday, or if you have any type of parent or grandparent, Please get them this. I promise 
It'll make their day and your day. MyFrontPageStory.com. How about BackOfficeSchedule.com, SteakhouseSports.com, HumanHeadNYC.com, 